gathering precious resources while fighting hunger and the cold. That's right, it's Frostpunk, the board game from Glass Cannon Unplugged. In this post apoc co-op survival game, one to four players take the role of advisors in the last city on Earth. Through a series of rounds, they'll gather coal, wood, and steam cores to build their city, feed their citizens, and avoid a variety of life-ending disasters. Setup begins with scenario selection. The new home crater scenario is found in the rule book while the other scenarios are in the scenario book. The scenario book contains a collection of stories and setups for the game. You'll need to follow the unique instructions for the one you choose. In our first game, we'll prepare the new home crater scenario, beginning with map setup by recreating the map in the book. The map area features the generator tile, a cookhouse, generator building, platform, five wood and five coal, now we'll shuffle the starting wall tiles face down and begin placing one face up in each corner of the rim board until we have placed three that feature a wood or coal deposit. Return the blank tiles along with any not yet placed to the box. Next, we will separate the map tiles into stacks of near and far and then give them each a shuffle. Once that's done, place one far tile in each corner of the map where there is no wood or coal starting wall tile followed by a near tile between the far tile and the generator board. Place the list of resources on the tiles. We'll set up a bank of extra resources. Note that I said bank and not a supply. It is not unlimited. For wood, coal, steam cores, trees, citizen meeples, and automatons. Some scenarios include steel, but not this one. Next, create the expedition display by separating the expedition cards by letter type and giving each a shuffle. Set each deck nearby, then reveal and place three cards from the A deck next to the board. Each of these cards are the start of an expedition stack. Next, choose a society card, one through six, and a difficulty level, normal or hard, because nothing's easy in this world. For the first game, we recommend Society 1, Normal. You'll learn more about these as you play, but they determine the starting citizens, resources, and more. Set the population board above the map, then following the values on the society card, place the citizen and sickness markers on the population track, food marker on the food track increased by any map tile bonuses revealed during the map setup, and the hunger marker on the zero space of the food track. Set up the supply board to the right of the map and place the corpse marker, you heard me, on the corpse track, starting wood, coal, and steam cores in the left box. Citizen meeples based on their position on the population track, workers, engineers, and children. A number of automatons, in our case, zero, and the spent citizen tokens alongside the board. This is the supply for the city and it's shared by all players. Next, place the buildings board, sort the buildings by type and place them on the board with their non-upgraded sides faced up. Place the hope and discontent board to the left of the population board and put all the hope and discontent tokens into their appropriate bags. That's right, and draw a number of tokens as listed on the society card placing them on the leftmost spaces of the track. The left number shows how many tokens to place, while the right number shows how many are activated. So we'll draw two and activate one. Repeat this process with the hope tokens. Set the round and morning board nearby and set the round marker on space one of the round track. Then shuffle the morning cards and place them in a face down deck. Set the storm marker on the space according to the scenario, which is nine in our case. Place the law cards labeled L1 through L8 in a face-up pile. Shuffle the law cards L9 through L16 and pull just four of them at random, setting them near the other law cards. Return the rest to the box. Place the law consequence cards face down nearby. If any law-specific buildings are required, set them below the buildings board. Set the desk board near the population board and place the inevitable card face down on the middle space. Shuffle the social dispute cards and draw one. You can peek at it to set your expectations, then shuffle it with the inevitable card to form the face down desk deck. 
Place the generator board to the left of the map and set the heat marker on its normal side on the first space of the heat track. Place three heat range indicators on the first three spaces of the generator track, red, orange, and yellow. Place the cold marker on the fifth space. Shuffle the weather cards and place them in a face-down draw deck. Each player now chooses the advisor they'd like to play as, each of which has a special ability and a responsibility sheet. Yeah, you got responsibilities, it's a survival game. Buck up, get to work. Each sheet covers the mechanics of the game that each advisor should oversee, and there's a ton of mechanics, so divvying them up in this way is very helpful to being able to learn them all. Take the citizen cards and give them a shuffle, then deal a number of cards to each player to form their starting hand. In a solo game, you get seven citizen cards and a call to rise card. Six citizens for a two player game, five for three player, and four for four player. Each player discards one citizen card of their choice, placing it in a discard next to the citizen deck and paying the cost in the top right of each card. Place the phase tracker card nearby and set the marker on the action phase. Place the scenario cards along the top right of the map as indicated in the scenario book. Read any face-up cards. Place any scenario trigger tokens on the round track and the storm card for the scenario face down to the left of the weather deck. Place the stockpile markers near the scenario display and give the leadership marker to a random player. And now we are finally ready to start the game. You did it. You really, you set it up. I'm proud of you. Before we cover gameplay, let's talk win conditions. Or rather, lose conditions, because this game is bleak. It's dire, it's tough. Players lose the game if any of the following occur. If the last hope token is removed from the hope track, people lost their will to survive. If the sixth discontent token is placed on the discontent track, people banish you from the city. Brutal. If the generator breaks down twice, it explodes. If the sickness marker is on space 26 in the preparation phase, overwhelming sickness. If the hunger marker hits space 25 after spending food, overwhelming hunger, and if the corpse marker hits the last space of the corpse track, overwhelming death. But if players manage to fulfill the objectives of their scenario before any of these absolutely awful fates befall the city, they win the game. Or at least survive another day. Gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into nine phases. Dawn phase, morning phase, generator phase, weather phase, preparation phase, action phase, dusk phase, hunger phase, and night phase. Notably, the first round of the game starts in the action phase, otherwise rounds occur in this order. First up in the dawn phase, the leadership marker is passed to the left and the round marker is moved to one space. If it hits a development token, place it active side up on the technology card with an open space. Then choose a technology card with an inactive development token on it, if any, and set that token on the round track a number of spaces ahead of the round marker as listed on the card. If the round marker hits a scenario trigger, resolve the scenario card related to that token. Next, in the morning phase, reveal and read the top morning card of the deck. Some of these have options for the players to choose, some with prerequisite conditions in a red text. Resolve the card and its effects, then either remove it from the game or place it in the event display. Then, in the generator phase, the players may spend any number of coal in the bank to fuel the generator generator, moving the heat marker one space for each coal spent. It cannot move beyond the cold marker. For each icon between the two markers, move the sickness marker of the corresponding type one space forward. If it passes over a citizen marker, flip it over instead. People getting sick from the cold. Additionally, take a number of coal cubes from the bank according to the heat track and drop them into the generator. Pull the drawer at the bottom and any cubes inside are put on the stress track. Also, this crossbar is the generator upgrade piece. It's unlocked later in the game, so don't place it yet. Like I did. Eesh, come on, Becca. Get it together. 
The stress track has 10 slots for cubes, any excess going into the overflow area and the generator breaks down. The heat marker is then reset to the first space. Next, in the weather phase, reveal the top card of the weather deck and resolve it. Weather cards have four sections. Adjustment of the heat range indicators, hunter's traps, which provides food for each hunter symbol on the hunter's huts, expedition progress, which advances each scout a number of spaces forward on their expedition stack. Scouts can be placed during the action phase, which we'll get to shortly. And move the storm marker, which moves the marker a number of spaces backward on the round track. When the storm hits the round marker, a storm hits the settlement, revealing a storm card and resolving it. Then, in the preparation phase, players select an advisor to use for that round, if any. Once chosen, that advisor's ability may be used by exhausting a hope token. Then, resolve the effect of each sickness marker on the population track from lowest to highest. Effects include spent citizens, who can't be used in the action phase, and flipping a sickness marker, resulting in a citizen falling gravely ill. If the sickness marker is already on the gravely ill side when it needs to be flipped, that citizen is dead. Which sucks for them. Next, the action phase. Check to see if the correct number of meeples are in the supply based on the position of the citizen markers. Then, if any spent citizen tokens are in the supply, place a meeple of that type from the supply onto each of them. Beginning with the leadership marker holder and proceeding clockwise, players take turns. On a turn, the active player first may fuel the generator. Then, they use one available meeple from the supply to perform one of the main actions. They could remove snow, which places new tiles and thus new resources on the map. Gather resources, allowing players to take the resources into the supply. Construct, providing the ability to build or dismantle buildings. Buildings can't be placed on spaces occupied by meeples, but can be placed over resources, destroying them. And large buildings have to be placed on one tile, not spread out over two. Use a building, letting the player utilize the building ability. Small buildings can hold one meeple, large buildings can hold two. Deploy Scouts starts the expeditions on the card stacks. This action can only be taken once a beacon has been built, or special actions. These include resolving actions on scenario cards or event cards. Additionally, when taking an action, the active player must check if the action is heated or cold and dress appropriately. If cold, they raise the sickness marker of that citizen type by one. The symbols on the heat range show which areas of the map and which buildings are insulated for the purposes of determining heated or cold actions. Buildings have insulation levels. Red is highest, followed by orange and yellow. These buildings are affected by the heat levels in different ways, allowing actions in those buildings to be heated instead of cold. And law cards. These provide new rules and options in the game, but many carry consequences in the form of consequence cards. Then, in the dusk phase, resolve any scenario or event cards with dusk phase on their effects. Afterwards, shuffle the dust deck, draw and read one card, resolving its effects. If the resolved card was the social dispute card, remove it from the game and draw the top card from the social dispute deck, then shuffle it into the dusk deck, including the discarded dusk cards. Next, the hunger phase. Citizens gotta eat. Players spend food to reduce the hunger level as much as possible. After spinning food, they check the hunger level and resolve the effects listed near the marker, including an increase in discontent, death of citizens, or in the case of 25 hunger or more, the end of the game. Once the effects are resolved, the hunger marker returns to the zero space of the food track. Then, citizens must be fed. One food per citizen of the type indicated by the current round. If any citizen is missing food, the hunger marker rises one space per unfed person. Finally, in the night phase, it's time to clean up. Return spent citizen tokens with meeples on them back to the bank. Return all meeples back to the supply, except the scouts out on expeditions. Optionally, fuel the generator for the night. 
For each sleeping slot in a heated shelter, lay down one meeple in the supply to show they have a warm night's sleep tonight. For each meeple still standing, not so lucky. Gain one sick citizen of that type. A few extra game mechanics to mention. Citizen cards. These core components, well I shouldn't say components, they're people, each have a citizen type, main ability, and death effect, so don't let them die. And that's the basics of Frostpunk the board game. There's plenty of detailed instructions for the main actions, resolving specific scenario cards, and more in the extensive rulebook. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you are an excellent survivalist, at least if it involves watching YouTube videos. Anyway, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and come on back for more great games and good times. We'll see you later.